and start. That's better. I'm here with the Omtech Solus Duo. This is one of three lasers in that line. Now, I have the middle grade one. The lowest grade does not have autofocus. This does have autofocus, and then obviously the higher one has autofocus. The only difference there is the strength of the fiber laser. This is a class one laser enclosure. They claim this laser will be good for about 100,000 hours. It does work with light burn. It also works with their uh, Omtech Studio. That software needs a lot of work, but I think they can easily update that in the future. So you could use it or, you know, just to get started. But I, I would recommend getting a light burn license at some point. Uh, light burn just gives you so much more control. It's so more robust. I actually need to renew my license because my license just expired. So I don't get updates now. So yeah, I, I would definitely recommend light burn with this. Now I will say I am still trying to figure this laser out. I have not had a lot of time to play with it. Uh, the lens is one of the largest lenses I've ever used. Uh, actually, it is the largest lens I've ever used. So I'm not confident on the settings yet. I'm still doing a lot of trial and error. Um, there's not a material library that I could find for this. So it's a lot of experimentation trying to get things dialed in because you have the wattage of the laser, then you have the lens and you just got to kind of experiment. I, I'm getting some pretty good results on some stuff, but on other stuff, I'm still like completely lost. So I'm not going to go too in depth with that here. Um, that's the thing with all these lasers. There's a lot of trial and error involved, even when you know like good references for a specific lens or, you know, a type of diode or, you know, whatever, CO2. Uh, because of the way things are, like in the CO2 tubes, there's variation in the CO2. On diodes, the diodes are grown, so there's variation in the diodes. Because the lenses are only a certain level of optically pure glass, they're not like NASA grade, you know, like space grade. You know, there's going to be imperfections and stuff. And even when they made stuff like James Webb and the Hubble, they had to do a lot of tweaking to get those optics right. So there's going to be... Even if you have a known reference file area, you're looking at like a 10 to 15% margin where you got to kind of like figure things out. And I'm still doing that. This does have a 16 megapixel HD camera. Um, again, full light burn compatibility in their Omtech Lab. I think I said Omtech Studio, it's Omtech Lab. It does have an optional conveyor system so you can run larger things through or batch process things through. The fiber should do like gold, silver, copper, brass, uh, stainless steel, titanium, uh, stuff like that. And then the regular diode laser in here, you know, will do wood, acrylic, leather. Just make sure it's not chrome treated leather. You don't want to breathe in lasered chrome treated leather. Uh, it'll do rubber and plastic. You don't want to do PVC. If you laser PVC, it releases dangerous chemicals that can like kill you dead. Same thing with the chromed leather. So just be careful you know what material you're putting in. And you can also do coated materials like remove the coating, say on a water bottle or I don't know, these business cards. I really like doing these business cards. Uh, I keep one-time passwords and stuff on them. It works out pretty good. It's nice because it's the two lasers in one, but it, it has this nice touch screen here or you can up and down the laser. There's a settings menu. You can change a bunch of stuff. I do have the screen protector on, so it's a little dim. You get a lot of sand here in the garage and I just don't want to scratch the screen. You can change your language language. I don't know why it's in German right now. There we go. And yeah, it also comes with a remote so you can start and stop it as well as frame your project. I'll show you that once I uh, get a project pulled up. But yeah, there is a safety switch or safety switches. I'm not sure if it's one or two that detect when the door is down. In Lightburn, you can disable that. And in their Omtech software, you can also go in. It's not an easiest to find place, but you can find it to disable that in the event you have something larger. Now I will say, if you do that, make sure you have proper uh, vision protection. Your best bet would be to have some sort of like welding screen or something to keep the light over there. And obviously I would just click start on the remote and I would be looking the other direction, which is what we'll do here in a minute because I don't have a welding screen or anything. But you could even fashion something out of cardboard to act as like a light shield if you really needed to. I, I appreciate the safety switch being there, but yeah, I'm gonna run it disabled pretty much all the time, unless I've got nieces around. Uh, I've got a couple of nieces next door, well, two doors down. And you know, if they want to come over and use it, I will make sure we're doing something that I can put the lid down because you know, youth are likely to want to look at the bright shiny thing and that could cause permanent vision damage. So let's get a project up and go ahead and try something. I'm just going to stick to something simple today. We're going to do a dog tag. We'll do a business card. And then I have a slate coaster 
that will run through. So I apologize for the shaky cam. We're just going to go handheld because it's going to be a lot easier than messing with the tripod at different heights. So here I'm just putting in this Beavis and Butthead skeleton kind of deal. And then if I remember how to do the preview here, I'm going to show you in their software. That'll give me the preview and then I can come in here and I can line the card up. Obviously, you could remove this and then you can use the screws to get something so it's precise every time. But I don't want to accidentally laze through this. This is one of the really thin cards, not one of the thicker ones that I normally use. So we're going to practice on it. And there's a chance that we may punch through the card. So I'm using the my brain is messy today. I have not had caffeine in three days. I'm trying to quit caffeine just because soda's getting like ridiculously expensive and, you know, water's pretty cheap. This looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to actually make it a little bit bigger to fit in the border. Oh, one thing first, I suppose we need to focus it. So since this is one of the models with the autofocus, I believe that's the button for that. And it's going to focus. It's going to go up and down until it gets the dots the way it wants. I'm going to change it a bunch just so we can show it. And then we're going to go ahead and hit that autofocus. See, now you can kind of see it going up and it's going to focus in. And then you also have the preview line button, so you can just do it straight from the remote. So I'm going to change the size of that and then we'll uh, see about getting it started. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'll show you their software real quick. I imagine you're going to want to just use Lightburn, but it's nice that they do have their own free software. Um, some of these companies don't. Sorry if the text doesn't want to focus here. So we're going to come down here. Remember what I was using. I think Coke can is kind of the same deal. We're going to use the red laser, which is the fiber, I believe. And we're just going to go ahead and do that. I do want to see a red outline. Is it going to do that for me now? So if you do the red line on red line outline and then preview, then I can see where they're kind of going to go. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll go ahead and stop that. All right, so I'm going to turn the other direction and we're just going to press this play button here and it should start lazing. Um, do that. And there we go. The laser does get pretty loud when it's cooling. And while we're talking about weight, I think I said this, but this is definitely something you're not gonna wanna like carry to craft fairs or something. It's like 55, 56 pounds. She's a heavy beast. Um, I mean, you could, but it's not a, a really lightweight option for that. Go ahead and take a look at that. I'm extremely happy with that. That Coke can setting is pretty great. As you see, cause this is a thinner card. It's already got scratches on it just from me handling it. But yeah, I didn't want to punch through, but that's pretty cool. So we'll do the same thing with the dog tag. We're going to do the dog tag. Same kind of deal. We need to focus it because it's a little bit different thickness. So here we're just going to do a QR code. Uh, I promise it's not a Rick roll, although that would have been funny. Maybe I should do that. Nah, we'll just do my website because I already got it typed in. And then again, we'll just go ahead and press the play button. So clearly whatever coding is on this, we need to try a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to play with that for a minute. All right, there we go. I went ahead and turned the power up and did it again on the other side. There's the first side. That was at about 60% uh, power, 1,000 speed, 30 kilohertz. So this is 100% power, uh, 1,000 millimeters a second, and then 30 kilohertz as well. And then that should be my website. I actually will show you the red diode too. Let me grab a wood coaster and we'll try something on that real fast. Again, we're just going to focus that so that's good. Now, I wouldn't do wood in here a lot myself. Uh, the wood tends to let off a lot of stuff, and it's just going to you're going to have to clean your lens a lot more frequently. You should still clean your lens every time you use it. Um, I like to just clean it off real quick when I'm done, and then because of all the sand in here, even with the lid closed, even if I like plastic bagged this thing when I wasn't working, the dust during the dust storms here is like very fine talcum powder, so it really gets into everything. So it's good to clean your lens. Also, make sure you take off the lens cap. Um, I didn't do it on this one, but a lot of the time on lasers, I always forget to take the lens cap off eventually and then fire at the lens and, you know. So let's find a cool image here. So I'm not too sure on wood settings because I haven't done them yet, so we're kind of shooting in the dark here. 
but we're going to go ahead and try this. I'm just doing like a Damascus pattern kind of on the top. It's a continuous pattern that I had. Uh, I wanted to see if we could do the lines this fine. I think it's going to have issues actually now that I'm looking at it. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll just do something real simple here. Uh, let's do a Lego head, I guess. That's better. So we'll go ahead and run this one again. We're kind of taking a stab in the dark here. Change some settings real fast. Now we're going to press that play button. So that was way too low and way too fast. Oh, I know why I had it on infrared laser still. My bad. Let's try that. Too fast. Not strong enough. Let's try it again. Oh, we're starting to see a little bit of something. Okay. It's half the speed again. And contact. Getting there. So I'm taking this down to one tenth of the speed that I was doing it at. That's better. So we've got our little guy there. I still want to make him a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and give us the framing again. All right. So we'll press play. All right, much better. So see, you can do wood, and if you notice, it does suck all of the, tries to suck all the exhaust out there, and then you can channel it, or channel it wherever you want with, uh, you know, like dryer vent tubing. So you can do that. So I've showed you the blue laser now. We showed you the infrared laser twice. Let's get a coaster out, and we will try uh, the infrared again. We'll put my logo on this one, I think. Go ahead and let it focus. Like, the autofocus on this, I will argue is the best autofocus that I've used yet. Uh, it just works. When I was doing some steel earlier, it's not quite good enough for the steel. You still have to manually do it a little. So what I like to do is I like to take the thickness of the steel and the type of steel I'm going to use. I let it autofocus. Then I start it. And while it's just doing a continuous square, then I manually adjust it until I see the amount of sparks that I know are going to be doing the good amount of stuff on steel. But for this other stuff, it works great. And then let me pull up my logo. Give me a preview there. Okay, so I need to shrink it some. Let's shrink it a lot. That way I can do multiple on one coaster. So we'll start with that one up here. Go ahead and stop our preview. And we're going to let that one rip. Ever so light. So we're going to go ahead and rotate the coaster a little and we'll try it again. We're going to change the setting some. Again, I haven't really done stone on this and start. Much better. So see, you can do all kinds of materials with this. Let's wait for that fan to calm down just a little. But yeah, like pretty, pretty nice little laser. Yeah, I like though. It's a it's a nice little laser. I. I'm more than happy with it. I don't even care about the touchscreen. I, I haven't really used it. And you can go in and do some things because it is nice. It tells you the focus distance in the working area. So once you do have something dialed in, you know, you can write down your focus distance, which is kind of cool. You know what laser you're using. But other than that, like, I don't need that. It's a nice feature, I guess, for some people, but it is what it is. Yeah, I'll play more with this in the future. I need to get some metal and stuff so I can kind of take a look at that. I had a bunch of welding coupons, but I don't know what I did with them. But it will do steel. I did do some on those. I'm just sorry I misplaced them. We've been kind of rearranging the garage. I have a standing desk coming for this corner this week to hold my lasers and a printer a little bit more stable than this plastic folding table. And stuff's just kind of got all set aside. My father-in-law is coming for Thanksgiving, and he's going to take a bunch of stuff, too, that we don't want and distribute it to my in-laws in Missouri. So, yeah, I... uh don't know where half my stuff is, but mine does have a small defect. They've told me they have fixed that in the ones that they're shipping. My screen here, protective screen, doesn't actually, it's not level. To get it to engage the safety thing, I have to hold it down in the back. You hear that click? I don't know if you can hear that. My mic's pretty good about background noise. So I have to hold it down if I want to use it. You know, you can disable it though. I'm not using it right now. Again, I'll only use it if like nieces come over or something and need something lasered just so they can see their thing being lasered. But it's not a big deal to hold it down. This thing's pretty fast for anything 
we would use it for. We're talking seconds. And again, they said they've rectified that. They told me that like two months ago that they had already identified that problem and solved it. And I believe them. Um, I've always been impressed with Omtex lasers. I had one of their CO2 lasers, if you go way back on the channel, and that thing was just amazing. Unfortunately, I didn't bring it with us when we moved. I ended up getting rid of it, passing it on to someone locally that could use it. I didn't know how much room I would have here. Now I wish I had it because I have a lot of room here, and it was the best CO2 laser I've ever had. And this is definitely up there in the fiber. And I really like that it has the blue diode too, because then you can do stuff like wood if you want. Uh, you got a pretty decent work area there. It's 250 by 250 millimeters. That's actually bigger than some of my 3D printers. So <laughs> kind of nice.